Right, well we're here in Monaco, uh, which is where Bruno Senna lives, and as I'm sure you saw on a recent video, I did a bit of a review of the new McLaren 720S. Ooh. <laughs> Bruno, very fortunately, owns his very own 675 LT. And I guess to kind of be able to really get a true comparison between the 675 LT and the 720S Spider, because I haven't actually driven this car before, he is very, very, very kindly, I believe, is going to actually let me drive it. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. I think uh, since you drove the 720 and I've heard that there'll be no accidents, I think you can drive my LT. Good! But, you know, you still pay for the damage. Yeah, you obviously haven't watched the video of the uh, 720S, have you? <laughs> Just carry on. It looks absolutely ridiculous. And actually, I haven't mentioned that it is, it is of course, the Spider. Well, how many of these have been made? 500? Yeah, the 500 of the Spider, 500 of the Coupe, and the supercar that you can drive on the track. It's fantastic fun to drive on the track. Sun is on. Let's do this. Right, here we go. Let's hit the streets of Monaco, Center style. Nice engine sound. Sounds absolutely awesome. <laughs> you enjoy yourself, Shields. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I forget we're supposed to do an interview here, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so look at that. On to the start finish train of the Formula One Monaco Grand Prix track. So many legendary drivers. Whoa, where are you going? Yeah, he doesn't care. Look at that. Oh my god, we've just been overtaken by the most ridiculous lorry. Oh, and he stopped as well. Did he? Oh, he's oh, letting that's, the that's pedestrians. pedestrians. That, at least that's, you know, okay, that's nice. fine, fine. So we are on the legendary drivers, including your uncle, of course, Ayrton Senna, who pretty much was the master of this track. Talk us through. Here we are on the start-finish line. That's the start-finish line. It's uh, <laughs> where we do all, uh, it's a very tense moment of the race. And the approach into turn one is always, always very tricky as well. And you can see it's just ready for the Grand Prix. It was, the Formula E race just happened uh, last weekend. So uh, lots of tire marks on the track. And we go up the hill here where the Formula One track goes. This is a very tricky part of this track because it's windy and you're going up to 250 kilometers per hour up this hill. It's really, really fast. 250 kilometers an hour up this hill. Yeah, we're doing 40. So, uh, <laughs> can you imagine how fast it feels when you're doing 250? <laughs> no! And it is so narrow. I mean, I cannot explain how narrow the walls are. I mean, yes, we've got two lanes of traffic, but when you're doing 240, 250 kilometers an hour, I mean, that's bonkers. Formula One has outgrown the, the streets of Monaco because when they started racing here back in the day, the cars were not quite as fast. So now, when you have 850, 900 horsepower driving through the streets of Monaco. It's a very short track, it's 3.2 yeah. kilometers. And I mean, what have your experiences been on this track? Highs and lows? Well, my high was uh, winning GP2 here, the feature race, and uh, it was amazing being on that podium. I got so many memories, and uh, it, was, it was fantastic. It was really, really fun to, to drive. This is a tough corner. Every time you approach this corner, you never know if you're gonna make it the other side. It's a track that you need to own, you need to Feel comfortable in, and winning that race was amazing. And then we had, uh, of was course, was it a, a few, tough battle that race? Very tough. I who, had, uh, who else was on podium? Pastor Maldonado was. Uh, he was on pole position. I was P2 in the qualifying. I got him on the start, and I put a nice gap uh, in the beginning of the race. Yeah, the Casino Square. What an iconic location. It is. I amazing. mean, driving through this, do you just feel like you're kind of? king of the roads in Formula One when you're driving through such iconic locations. Well, you just, first you'd have to focus on not crashing, but yes, it's uh, definitely one of those uh, places where you really, really feel like the intensity of driving and uh, it's amazing. It's really, really amazing. This corner is fantastic as well. You come in here and the car has a very strange behavior and you have to brake really hard into this hairpin and if you make a small mistake, it's game over. And it's, it's amazing how slowly you have to go around this, the, the turn here at the Fairmont. What, what kind of speeds are we doing here at this hairpin? This is probably the slowest corner in the calendar. The, speed, the minimum speed here is 50 kilometers per hour. 
okay. And, uh, what am I so doing? We're doing we're doing 15, so <laughs> almost there. Nick, you uh, need to work a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's my warm-up lap. Can I take a bit of curb here? Oh uh, yeah, but uh, maybe maybe not today, Nick. We'll, we'll give it for the next time you come and the track is empty. How does that sound? So we're coming to the tunnel, which is obviously the, the most iconic part of the track. It's uh, the only track in the Formula One calendar with the tunnel. And it's, uh, it makes the car feel so strange. When you go into the tunnel, suddenly the noise changes, the light changes, and the car feels all yeah. strange. It's, uh, it's an amazing part. When you watch it on television, the light change, obviously, because we're watching it through a camera, it's really dramatic. <laughs> I see that. But the light change when you're actually in the car isn't really quite so dramatic. You know, it doesn't affect your vision, or does it, when oh. you're going at your speed? Well, not anymore so much because we have some, such amazing lightning in the tunnel now. But before, I think up until the early 90s, this was not well lit. And uh, you came into the tunnel and suddenly you were, you know, in the dark yeah. from very bright light. So, uh, okay. very tricky. Some drivers have different techniques. They would close their eyes just before getting to the tunnel to get to just faster I mean yeah. you don't want to close your eyes when they you're would close speed. their eyes sorry what explain that theory to me I know it's going not, into uh, the tunnel you'd close your eyes yep it's not the normal thing to do but um, <laughs> so we missed a corner here Nikki you're gonna get penalized for uh, track cutting uh -oh. sorry to say that sorry but it's okay it's over there yeah but it's okay we can go we can go into the port from the other side anyway which is your favorite part of the track? For me, it's the port. Uh, the port is the fantastic part. You have more high-speed corners. You have a change of direction. It's a really tricky part. But to be fair, this whole track is amazing. It's, uh, it's got loads of uh, features. And I mean, uh, we've got all these ridiculous yachts surrounding the track. Fans going absolutely wild. Are you aware of that in the car? Are you aware of people, you know, being wined and dined? and celebrating drinking champagne while watching you or are you just focusing on the tarmac in front of you? Well, this is one of the tracks that you don't have a lot of time to uh, think about life because really... I'm just going to pretend to wave to the crowd. You, you can you can wave and uh, everybody will be waving back at you. They'll be <laughs> cheering for you. But really, this is a track that focus cannot be lost and uh, we have to be very, very focused. All these corners here are very fast and you have to take all the track the whole time. We saw Nico Rosberg crashing here a few years ago. Everybody kisses these barriers, and uh, when you kiss the barriers, normally the barriers win. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, it's very nice, and you see all the tourists here, they're all watching what you're doing, so be careful. <laughs> always careful, Bruno. Always careful. Always, always. This is the corner they changed a couple of years ago. It used to be with a more space into the inside, so you could see the corner better. Now they put the guardrail right tight. next to the track, very tight, and uh, still fast, you can still carry some speed into it, it's a very, very fun corner. We're coming to Haskas, the famous Haskas corner, we're seeing... How uh, do you pronounce it? Uh, Haskas. Haskas, yeah. oh dear. So when us Brits will call it Raskas, well, you know. it's, uh, it's not the, uh, the true way of saying it. Well, I don't think that my French is perfect either, but uh, maybe it's a bit closer to uh, the... Uh, the real pronunciation. <laughs> and we're approaching the last corner as well. After Raskas, we're just about to turn right. Oh, it's our friend the truck again. <laughs> Look at him. He's just trying to get in our way. Huh? Yeah, he's a. Uh, and then, so if you want to, you would go. Pit lane, you turn right here. There. We don't want to go in the pit lane right now. We could try right. and ask. Bruno, thank you so much uh, for letting me take it for a drive and for a tour of the uh, Grand Prix circuit. It's been awesome and I look forward to coming back when the 720S arrives. Sounds good. We'll do another trip and uh, <laughs> we'll lift the seat for you a little bit more. Yes, please. That would be great. Clearly, I'm too small for this car. Ah, well, never mind. You can't have it all. <laughs> Thanks, Bruno. Thank you.